It was June 1967. Ohio Bobby Bulldog Stamatano was a ranked contender, punching above his weight. He looked big inside the ring at the Auckland YMCA, but as far as Pete Gibson was concerned, the Bulldog couldn't throw a shadow, let alone a punch. He'd gone up to him in the dressing room and told it to his face. Still, Stamatano cast dark voodoo scowls at him and said he'd bury his white ass so deep they'd have to dig him out of the undercard. The news came... Newspapers gave the Baptist and the title on a second round cut ice stoppage. Pete remembered it differently. In his, vision, in his version, he chased the half pint yank around the ring for seven of the scheduled ten rounds and won every one hands down. The cut was a fit up. In March, Stinatano had gone down to any Eddie Gunslinger Cotton, the West Coast Cassius Clay, and the promoters needed, to, needed a win to keep their boys in the rankings. Pete needed them needed the dough bad. My womb expands, a whole universe, tight sweet pain. Rebirthing my lovers, I wish to Fuck the ugly wall out of them. I wish not to be there, to be a sex and a journey, a laughter of an old witch, one in the, in the unsatiable mouth of spring, a house made of gem jars filled with echoes of amorous sighs, blossoms in pubic hands, snails in my ears, pearls of seed around my neck, and yet not to be there. What would a world be like if mothers were bold enough to sure. love more and stand strong when their birth pains are forgotten and don't count anymore? Unsteady earths would shake me, a decolonization of my mind, an emotional cartography, Rorschach's influence. <laughs> Too young, he said. Big girl, big girl. I like big girl, he said too brightly. You're very handsome man, said one of the girls to Jack. Jack stood to leave, but the man, suddenly furious, blocked the door. You choose, he said. No, said Jack. I like big girl. Then you give me fifty dollar, pay mama for trouble. <laughs> no, said Jack. I'm leaving now. Now. No, you don't leave, said the man. He sat down on the edge of the bed and took out a pistol. I'll pay. I don't have fifty dollars, said Jack. It was true. He had thirty. I had thirty, he said. Okay, you make boom boom, said the man. Okay, you no say police. You fuck. Girl no scared. 
many times before. You know, we now we said, fuck, we choose. Jack silently watched the man place the gun on the bedside table, the barrel pointing in Jack's general direction. We choose, said the man. <laughs> procession of them, God freaks in the light. Some girl had been kidnapped, raped with garden shears and private drummies. Uh, it derived from Drummy the Happy Drone, a popular cartoon show that served to accustom the populace to the concept of unmanned drone aircraft carrying out a variety of law enforcement, entertainment, and service taxes. <laughs> In the show, Drony was outfitted as a smiling clown with a blinking red light on its nose <laughs> and was de depicted delivering ice cream sundaes to happy children, swooping from the skies to rescue children and elderly about to be attacked by terrorists or protesters, and using missiles to blast other bad guys attempting to flee from the scene of their latest crime. Okay. Uh, and, then, and then she had been impaled. Uh, at, at the end, she'd been dragged into the street and set on fire. It had all the trappings of a ritual, but this would never be reported, and the authorities had blamed, as usual, only the ubiquitous protester terrorists, whoever they were. <laughs> 